Roger Henny. I'm the CTO of a blockchain project called Datum. And um, I think tonight there's two other blockchain events going on in Hong Kong as well. And I guess at least one of them is an ICR roadshow. So there's nothing wrong with that, but we felt there's not enough being done for the people who actually build these platforms um, and develop the infrastructure. So we started this Meetup Hong Kong Blockchain Developers um, Group. And um, yeah, so our, our intent is to connect the Hong Kong developer community um, to share knowledge and experience, to educate beginners and experts alike, so maybe we can do a hackathon or something like that in the future. Um, and last but not least, also promote um, blockchain technology in, in general. And um, so I have a Ethereum t-shirt here tonight, but we're, we, we aim to be platform agnostic. Um, so that we can also feature other blockchains um, and see how they're doing stuff. I guess you know, a lot of people are developing on Ethereum, but there's a lot of stuff out there as well. Um, so all skill levels are, are welcome. We try to keep these the presentations at the meetups um, relatively simple. Um, we'll see how it goes once we maybe have a bigger audience. We may do some expert sessions as well in the future. Um, and we plan to do at least uh, one meetup per month. And so we need your help. So we kickstarted this meetup, but if you are interested to help organize this meetup, spread the word, or have any suggestions for people who could do a talk, um, or also help us finding uh, venues, then um, please get in touch. And we do have a Telegram group, although I was just told. Uh, no one uses Telegram here, but it really depends, right? So I guess in the crypto community, uh, many people have Telegram, so we may do a WhatsApp group as well to connect everyone together. So please join us there. Um, and so tonight was sponsored by us, Datum. Um, so we have seven people in Hong Kong and a few more spread out in the world. And so we are actually hiring um, developers. So um, if you're in the market, then please contact us jobs at datum.org. So tonight um, I'm very excited to have James Duffy um, do a screencast. Uh, he's one of the co-founders of Loon Network and they're working on the scalable side chains for Ethereum. So if you've been doing any smart contract development and are using the Ethereum mainnet, you may have been hit by CryptoKitties and essentially your application is now five times as expensive to transact on and um, users have to wait forever. So they may have a solution for that. And they're currently in private beta, um, but I heard there they may have something public in Q1 next year. So please go and, and check out the Loom network. Um, but tonight he's going to talk about another project, which is uh, CryptoZombies.io, um, which is an online course that aims to teach uh, blockchain development and specifically um, how to build a DAP. Um, yeah, and so I'll hand over to James and he's going to do a uh, walkthrough of that. Okay, um, can you hear us James? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll try and turn you around. <laughs> so you see our little crowd here. Alright, nice. How's it going, everyone? Uh, forgive me, I don't have a slide deck. This is a, going to be a little bit off the cuff, um, but I'll share my screen later and like, kind of be for our platform, Crypto Zombies. Um, just so I can get an idea of the audience, how many people in the room are developers? Yeah. And how many uh, people have bought or interacted with the Bitcoin before? Okay. How about Ethereum? Okay. And has anyone ever written code in Solidity before? Okay. So it looks like a bit of a mixed audience. Um, about me, I'll just give you some background. Uh, so I'm not an expert in Solidity. I'm still learning all the intricacies. I'm just going to throw it out, out there now. So um, if you ask me a question, I'll just tell you up front if I don't know the answer. Um, but I'm the co-founder of Loom Network. Um, Roger gave us a pretty good intro there. But yeah, if um, you guys are familiar with CryptoKitties, it completely killed Ethereum. So we're asking, you know, how would you run a StarCraft 
for World of Warcraft or a Twitter application on the blockchain. Uh, so those are the problems that we're trying to solve. And we built Crypto Zombies because we want to get more developers building real world applications. Um, mostly the hype around the blockchain so far has been around financial applications. So you know, the things dealing with like cryptocurrencies, account balances, ledgers, things like that. Um, we think the blockchain has huge potential for things like online games, online communities. So yeah, we're open building apps on Ethereum. Uh, maybe you guys will post them on our platform in the future. Okay, so I don't want to dive too deep on how blockchain works, but um, I guess I'll give kind of a, a quick intro to, to what blockchain is for people who aren't too familiar with it. Now, if you ask 10 different blockchain experts, you'll probably get 10 different definitions what exactly a blockchain is. Um, but I'd say it's basically you have a distributed database where the nodes don't trust each other. So they're all storing the same data, every single node on the network, and you need to have some mechanism for them to agree on the same set of data. So how blockchain works is the racing ahead with blocks. So a bunch of transactions are broadcast to the network, and each node will collect a bunch of transactions, and then they have to solve like a hard mathematical problem. Um, and then the first one to get it, they'll race ahead to the next block, and they'll tell everyone, okay, I found the next block. Then they get a reward for doing so. So now all the other nodes on the network want to, they're just going to skip the work they're doing, uh, verify that everything in this block is correct, and then everyone's going to start working on the next block. Now, this kind of protects the network because if someone decides, oh, I'm going to ignore your block, and I'm going to like keep going on my own, well, the whole could use whichever one they want to. So yeah, that's kind of why, uh, why us and Loom were really excited about blockchains for these non-financial applications. Okay, um, so Bitcoin is a very simple blockchain in that it basically just does one thing. You have account balances and people can transfer balances between accounts. It's basically just one application um, where people are transferring digital money back and forth. So on Bitcoin, everyone has an address, and that's kind of like a bank account number. So in Bitcoin stores how much money is in each address, and then you can tell it, I want to send money to this other address. And that's basically all Bitcoin does. It keeps track of how much balance each person has. Now Ethereum, what Ethereum added to the blockchain is uh, programmable smart contracts. So this means instead of just an account holding a balance, you can actually upload any piece of code into an address on Ethereum. And now this code is living in the blockchain, so every single node is running that. They have this piece of code available, and then any user can call that, that contract. So they can execute that piece of code. Um, and basically what this does is once that piece of code is in the blockchain, no one can stop that code from executing. So this makes uh, Ethereum an extremely secure uh, store of data. Um, it, it's a very, very slow computer, but it's like no one can stop that code from executing. So you don't have an issue where you upload something to a web server and that web server doesn't like your code, so they just shut down your account. Okay. So yeah, that's just kind of a, a background on blockchain, Ethereum. Again, I'm not sure exactly where everyone's level of knowledge is, so um, if you have any questions toward the end, if you want to talk more about that stuff, we can talk about that. But um, I wanted to focus more on learning to code your own DApps. Um, and so we're going to talk about Solidity, which is the programming language uh, that most people use for Ethereum applications. So I'll give you a brief walkthrough of crypto zombies. Let me share my screen here. We get that awkward moment in Skype when someone shares their screen and then you're looking at yourself. <laughs> okay. So this is CryptoZombies.io. Um, it's our website. It's totally free. It's always going to be free. So you can come here um, and to learn how to code Solidity, to code your first Ethereum application. So most of the tutorials online were mainly focused around, uh, again, kind of 
financial applications, building like, um, you know, building tokens or, you know, doing an ICO, something like that. We wanted to do something kind of fun, so we wanted to build a game on Ethereum. Um, so yeah, by the end, we've released lesson one so far, and there's going to be one new lesson each week. Uh, so lesson two is coming out this week. But by the end of it, you're gonna have a fully functional game that you can run on Ethereum. Um, and we're also gonna kind of add some gamification on it. So as you complete lessons, you'll you know get crypto collectibles, which you can then use in the live version of the game when we launch it. So. I'm not going to walk you through the entire course. I'll just kind of give you an overview of it. Um, we kind of try to make it fun, make it a bit game-like itself. So basically, this game is kind of roughly based on CryptoKitties. So in CryptoKitties, um, if anyone's not familiar with it, these are basically like digital Beanie Babies. And this is a, a very, very simple game. So all you can do is you can buy a cat, and kind of each cat has its own unique appearance. And you can breed your cat either with another cat that you own or someone else's cat. And then because each cat kind of has its own unique DNA, um, the two cats that you breed would have an offspring that would have its own kind of appearance that was based on the parent's DNA, but also a bit random. Um, and that's basically all there is to the game, but this really blew up because it's the first time or I guess one of the first times we've seen like real crypto collectibles. Um, when you play this game, your crypto kitties are stored on Ethereum and you have full ownership of them. So you can trade your crypto kitties with someone else. Um, no one can stop you from doing what you want with these uh, crypto kitties. Actually, that's a little bit debatable. Um, we wrote an article about this because if you look at the actual source code of the crypto kitty smart contract, um, the owner of the contract has like permission to pause the whole application, so it's not really that like fully decentralized. It's more like uh, the kind of the CEO who has control if he wants to. But um, but so we kind of base uh, at least the beginning of our game is roughly based on this. So we have zombie DNA, which is represented by a number, and each two digits of this number maps to a different body part. So here you can see that there's like different zombie heads. Santa hat for Christmas. Um, different eyes. Different hoods. And that there's some color aspects. And basically, if you have a randomly generated number, it's going to generate a completely different zombie appearance. So in the actual lessons themselves, um, it's kind of a code academy style. It really walks you through step by step, um, trying to break it down as simple as possible. So we've even had some, we originally wrote this for developers of like another programming language who wanted to learn Solidity. Actually, we've had some people who are complete beginners to programming going through the corpus and, and giving us positive feedback on it. Um, so yeah, basically each lesson will kind of teach you about uh, one of the constructs in Solidity, and then you'll have a chance to put it to the test. It'll give you some instructions on what you should do, and it's based on what you just learned in this lesson. So this one tells you to declare this, and then um, basically what happens is if you make a mistake, so we're supposed to make a contract called Zombie Factory, um, or do this or something like that. Check answer, it's telling you oh, there's a mistake here. Um, you can try again, and if you can't figure it out, you can click show me the answer, and it'll kind of give you a diff here. And then if you try again and you get the answer right, you get like a zombie animation. Um, yeah, so basically this takes you step by step, and I'm not going to go through all of them right now, but I'll kind of jump ahead because I already like been through the course. Um, and by the end of it, this is this is the the code that you'll have written. And basically, what this is is it's a random zombie generator. So after you've completed the course and you've written your first smart contract, you get this random zombie generator. So basically, you type the name Steve or whatever, and 
as you can see, for each one, it, um, it generates a, a random number, and then that determines the zombie's appearance. Okay, and then kind of at the end of the lesson, you know, you get your congratulations, and then you can you get a share link so you can share your zombie on Twitter or Facebook. Now, uh, as I said, we finished just lesson one so far, but we plan on releasing one lesson per week, and this is kind of going to take you from absolute beginner to solidity. To by the end of this, you'll have your own fully functional game. So lesson two is coming out this week, and you know instead of just generating a random zombie, we're having some functionality where the zombie can attack something, and then you know kind of that creates like he attacks the feed on something else, and then based on that thing's DNA, their zombie's DNA, they'll kind of spawn a new zombie as its own appearance, and then in later games, later levels, we're gonna have it. So you know. Eventually, you can actually take the zombie army and, and battle against other people's zombie army. Now, so these are going to come up per week. Um, if you finish this lesson, if you want to jump, um, there is a bunch of tutorials online, but honestly, I think one of the best ways to learn is to just read someone else's code. Um, so I wrote this article, uh, which is breaking down the CryptoKitties code. So, CryptoKitties, I think, is one of the first examples of kind of a like, longer, fully fledged app that's not just financial in nature. So you can see the source code, I have a link in the article. And here, this code is actually quite readable. Um, it's about 2,000 lines of code, but that includes all of these comments. And if you're going through it, the comments are actually like very well written to describe exactly what's happening in the code. So you can read through my article where I kind of explain some of the more important parts of the contract, uh, and or you can just read through the entire contract yourself. And I think that's a really good way to really get familiar with Solidity and how to do some of the best practices here, because this code is, is a, it's quite well written. Uh, well, well The other thing is on the site um, Etherscan, you can actually look up any smart contract on Ethereum. And because once a piece of code is in the Ethereum cloud, um, it compiles down before it's deployed. And for someone who's just looking at the compiled code, it's kind of like machine code. So they don't really know what the contract does. So this site Etherscan. People will upload the original source code here of their contract, and either scan will compile it and verify that it's the same one that's posted on the server. So, or sorry, hosted on the blockchain. So you can look up uh, any contract's address here, and you can see it as the contract source code. It's a verified contract. And then you can actually just read the source code. So if you're looking at any of these um, more popular apps online, you can actually just look up the code. In a lot of cases, uh, you'll be able to read the code there. Um, we also have a tool called if, and basically this is just an in-browser IDE for Solidity and also a code sharing site, so you can share your code snippets. But um, if you're just messing around with Solidity and you just want to test it in the browser without having to set up your environment or anything like that, you can. Um, just write your code in here, and then you can compile it. So this is a very, very simple contract. Um, basically, storing an unsigned integer, so storing a number called value, and then it defines a setter function and a getter function for that value. Um, you'll notice that Solidity looks quite similar to JavaScript, although there's, um, there's quite a few differences. But in terms of syntax, it looks quite similar to JavaScript. And then what you can do in each middle is you can run these functions. So we can call this set function, and we can enter a value. And then you can call the getter, and it returns the value. So this can be quite useful if you just kind of want to play around in the browser um, and while you're like first getting familiar with Solidity. Okay, um, so that's kind of all I had 
Mine's here. I'm happy to take questions. How do I find share screen? There we go. Okay, very cool. Um, yes, I guess, uh, um, as James said, right, if you want to get started with Solidity, this is definitely, um, you know, I guess, an excellent um, introduction. Um, so I'll ask the first question, James, now, how many lessons are they going to be? Is it going to take a year to learn all about Solidity? Or? Um, I don't think so. I don't know the exact number of lessons yet. You know, kind of depend how much functionality we built into the game. But I'd say maybe like five or six lessons around that. You know, it might end up being a couple more, but I'd say it probably won't be, um, you know, more than two months before we get all the lessons out. Right. Okay. Very cool. Um, any questions from the audience? Awesome. Just shout it out. <laughs> Uh, it seems like a, um, a great um, application to learn about uh, solidity. You mentioned earlier that um, there are a bunch of resources on the web to learn about programming smart contracts uh, in Ethereum for financial services or ICOs, uh, financial services applications or ICOs. Um, what, what are some of those? I mean, I guess where I'm coming from is I'm sure a lot of us developers are getting approached on a daily basis about um, um, you know, writing smart contracts for, uh, for people when obviously they're willing to pay good money for that. So what's the quickest way to get up the curve to, to learn about um, you know, programming smart contracts for uh, you know, those financial services applications? I'm sorry, I couldn't uh, quite hear the question because of the echo, but I think you're asking if you wanted to learn kind of the financial side of smart contracts, would be the best way to do that? Yes. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So how do you build a smart contract for an ICO? Oh, okay. So for an ICO, kind of a set of best practices has emerged here. So most of the ICOs are using what's called the ERC20 token, um, which basically is just it's, it's a contract that has a set number of functions that all ERC-20 tokens have. So if you wanted to build an ERC-20 token, really you could just look up the source code of any number of ERC-20 tokens that have already been launched to the network. Um, and presumably some of these bigger ones that haven't been hacked, uh, you know, is following best practices and can be a pretty good basis for it. Yeah, there's also a project called uh, Zeppelin, Open Zeppelin, and they basically have a sort of template for a token sale, effectively, a few other things. Um, I guess from my side, like, like if you write the maybe crypto zombies, then you know, by all means write as much code yourself, but if you do something with financial transactions, um, it may make sense to actually copy something from a repository that has been audited or reviewed by others. Um, there, there's really no need to, to reinvent the wheel uh, heavily, especially for basic token sale. Yeah, I'll reiterate that because there's solidity is actually not a great language. There's a lot of um, pretty bad like security holes in solidity, but most of those have been discovered by now. So kind of best practices have emerged. So if you're building like a token smart contract or something, you know, that holds value, you don't really want to go out at that by yourself. I would just, um, yeah, use one of these token generators. Um, use code that's already trusted and vetted by the community. So James, so, can you talk a bit about the scaling? So obviously, Kitties has um, clogged up the network, and it's still kind of clogging up the main net. So, so I mean, what are your views? You know, is there anything that can be done right now? What's your suggestion to developers how to deal with that? Right. So this is kind of this is why we're building Loom Network because right now any application of considerable scale can't run on the mainnet. It can't run on the Ethereum mainnet. So if you wanted to build like a decentralized Twitter, someone actually did build an app called EtherTweet, 
But the thing is, at, at current Ethereum prices, it would cost you, I haven't calculated this recently, but probably over $2 every time you wrote a tweet. Um, so Twitter does 7,000 transactions per second. Ethereum right now can only handle around 10, maybe 20 transactions per second. Sorry, Twitter does 7,000 tweets per second. Um, so it's even if Ethereum scaled 100 times its current volume, you wouldn't want to run that on the main Ethereum blockchain. It's way too slow. It would uh, burn billions of dollars per month. So kind of what we're doing is these types of applications, like they need to be running on side chains so they're not clogging on the main net. And Ethereum is focused on a lot of scaling solutions like Raven and Plasma. And what these are going to do is use side chains to increase the financial transaction volume on Ethereum. There's a lot of really smart people working on those projects. Um, so we looked at this and we said, okay, Ethereum's working on increasing the throughput to basically make Ethereum you know, as useful as something like Visa for financial transactions. Um, but what we're focusing on is these non-financial apps. So if you wanted to run a decentralized Reddit, Twitter, or you wanted to run your own game on the blockchain, um, the idea is you would run it state to Ethereum. Um, so you have this extremely pure store of data for anything that had to do with financial transactions, and you could run that on Ethereum, but then the rest of the app, all of the computations, you could be running on the side chain, so you're not um, clogging up the mainnet, and also, so it wouldn't be really expensive to run your app. Okay, very cool. Um, are there any more questions? I'm, I'm sorry, I really can't hear Yeah, that. so I'll repeat the question. The question is, how, how would you implement the game where you want to update data? Because basically, um, data on the blockchain is immutable. So so what if you want to update characters or, or other stuff in the game? Yeah, that's a really good question. So one thing about uh, smart contracts is that once you deploy them to the blockchain, you cannot edit the code. It lives at that address. You can't change the code. So this has some benefits because now everyone who sees the code, well, they know they can trust it to do exactly what they think when they send money, when they send Ethereum to it. But um, from a developer's perspective, that can be really difficult. So this is another reason why we think applications running on Ethereum have a really difficult time um, because it's, it's basically impossible to update the application. You would have to deploy a new application and then maybe have some function in your old contract to tell it when there was an update to tell the client to, to contact this new application instead. Or maybe your contract would forward things to the new contract. But that's a security hole because, well, now whoever creates that contract, they could put a back door to do something completely different and tons of people using it wouldn't be aware. Um, so our idea is these applications should really be running on their own sidechain. And then what happens here is when the developers want to update the application, they need to do a hard fork. So all the nodes that are, so say you have a community like Twitter, um, and everyone is like, oh wow, this community is really awesome. I, I really like this. I want to support it by running my own node. They could be running their own nodes. And then what happens is if the developers launch something that, that updates features, the nodes would have to agree, yeah, we like this, we're going to run this new piece of code. Um, if there's a group of nodes who decided, no, we're completely against this code, they could hard fork. So the, the network would actually split in two. So really, this lends itself to, if you have a community or a game, the users really have a lot of say in, in what happens. So you don't run into issues where like a company who owns a server decides to completely change the way to do things and the users are kind of held hostage. Cool. I think there was one more question. I guess you think that you use a site net, uh, one site chain, right? So are you using Plasma or something else? Or is it your own 
will you then you do itself? So you're saying, um, are you using uh, Plasma or basically your own side chain? Or, or, yeah. yeah, so so the platform we're building is going to allow people to spin up their own side chains. So as a developer, you could deploy the Loom and you could spin up your own side chain. Um, the stuff that Ethereum is working on Plasma and Raven, that's definitely still going to be necessary to, to scale financial transactions. So we're not competing with Ethereum, we're kind of building on top of Ethereum to make the ecosystem more robust as a whole. So what's your view? Um, do we talk a lot about Ethereum, right? But there's guys like EOS, Tezos, and many others that say they, they have a solution to all the problems, right? So, so I just wonder about your personal opinion. Do you think Ethereum will basically out-engineer all, all the newcomers, or, or is there, you know, is there any project you you, you think has, has real merit and a better solution? Yeah, so that's that's a complex question. Um, I I don't really kind of take sides on anything, but I think that there's fundamental trade-offs that every blockchain is going to run into, where you have speed and you have scalability and you have security and you can choose two of these but not all three so any of these blockchains that claim that they have attained these these really insane like speeds or scalability most of the time they're doing it at the cost of security um and by security i mean decentralization so basically they have uh, like a few nodes on the network that have a lot more power than the other nodes on the network um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing for certain applications, but I think a lot of these, a lot of these blockchains that are trying to compete with Ethereum, if they're trying to do financial transactions on chain, they're going to run into the same scalability problems that Bitcoin is having and Ethereum is having, um, which is that on one blockchain, keeping everything decentralized, you just can't keep boosting um, throughput. And so my opinion is that the, the true way to scale it is through sidechains, where each sidechain can be making its own rules and trade-offs depending on the speeds and the security it requires. So I look at um, projects like EOS, I, I, I watch with interest, because I actually think Dan Lambert is like a really smart guy, but I think that what they say that they can do, we'll, we'll just kind of have to wait and see, right, if they can actually pull it off, because um, Ethereum also in the beginning, you know, had lots of like promises about what was possible, and then as it's gotten bigger and got hit with crypto kitties, like it hasn't really panned out exactly as we thought it was. So I think these other blockchains that have these really fast throughputs, they just haven't had their crypto kitties moment yet. And if they get as popular as Ethereum is, then we'll see if they actually hold up. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um... Okay, so thanks a lot, James. Uh, let's give him a big one.